This illustration here is a summary of some of the key points of cocaine intoxication and cocaine overdose. In the center of the slide, you see my character here from the sympathomimetic toxidrome. You want to remember that cocaine is a sympathomimetic drug where it's going to cause some tachycardia, potentially cause chest pain, it's going to cause diaphoresis, dilated pupils, high blood pressure, bowel sounds will still remain present and normal. Down here you can see it can cause hyperthermia, hyperreflexia. Some of the issues of cocaine in particular is it can cause cardiac arrhythmia, vasospasm, potential bronchoconstriction, and platelet aggregation. Treatment for cocaine-induced chest pain includes benzodiazepines, which will also help with the agitation and some of the other manifestations of the cocaine intoxication. Some interesting things with cocaine, specifically crack, is that some patients have recognized that crack cocaine can be injected. When injecting crack cocaine, however, since it's a free base, people have recognized that they need to mix the free base with a weak acid and will either use vinegar or lemon juice to ionize and propanate the free base and make it able to be absorbed via injection. When people use cocaine, they often will consume alcohol as well which will create its own metabolite. So in the liver, alcohol plus cocaine creates something called coca ethylene, which is actually a bioactive compound and has a much longer half-life than the cocaine itself. And this coca ethylene is actually quite cardiotoxic. People that smoke crack cocaine often will consume it through what is known as a crack stem, which is simply a hollow glass tube, and they'll often put a small piece of either still wool, or in many cases, a piece of a chore boy, which is a brand of copper-based wiring used for scrubbing pots, because copper has a much higher burning temperature than steel. With the crack pipe, they'll then put the crack cocaine at the end of the crack pipe, then the piece of steel wool or chore boy copper scrubbing pad to prevent the crack from getting inhaled through the crack stem and this part of the crack stem is where they put it in their mouth. When smoking crack, people can get burns, such as an eschar burns on their lips, and occasionally blisters on their finger from holding the crack pipe, because again, glass does conduct heat quite well. As you see here, for our comedy aspect of this illustration, we made reference to Dave Chappelle's character, where he plays the role of the crackhead. Lastly, a key thing to remember about cocaine in the United States is that about 75% of cocaine in the United States has been cut with levamisole as a cutting agent. And levamisole is a deworming agent that's used in cattle. So we've illustrated here, if you're using cocaine, you're using levamisole. Now levamisole is quite interesting because it's a deworming agent that's used in veterinarian purposes to kill worms in cattle. The levamisole causes a dose-dependent depletion of granulocytes which includes the neutrophils and can also cause 
areas of skin necrosis and vasculitis. Levamisole was initially used as an immune modulator in the adjunct treatment of colon cancers, but because of significant agranulocytosis, its use has now been limited just as a anti-helminthic or deworming agent in veterinary practices. But for whatever reason, we're seeing levamisole being increasingly used as a cutting agent in cocaine. And again, about 75% of the U.S. cocaine supply has some levamisole in it, and the amount of levamisole is increasing. We've seen cases where patients come into the emergency room with opportunistic infections, and we assume that it's, at that point, full-blown AIDS. However, we check their labs, we find that the white blood cell count is zero, neutrophil count is zero, so we put them on neutropenic precautions. Their red blood cell count will be normal, platelet count tends to be normal, so we know that it's not a pan anemia, but only the neutrophils and granulocytes are affected. Assuming the patient has full-blown AIDS, we go ahead and check the HIV, which is negative, then the urine drug screen comes back positive for cocaine. So levamisole is quite an interesting toxin in and of itself, so I'd recommend that you look at some other um, videos or images on the internet regarding the type of vasculitis that patients that use cocaine that's been cut with levamisole experience and read some of the uh, case reports out there about levamisole poisoning.